UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin-only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to match five of the UBC final between Hideaki Ueda and Masayuki Mochizuki. Uh, this is Nick Blazier here doing commentary along with Mark Olson. What's up, Nick? Hey, Good to be hey. here. Yeah, yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with this. It was a really exciting day one for the for the players. You know, four matches a day is what they're doing, so they're coming back on their second day. I believe we have interviews queued up with both of the players to see how they're feeling after that first day. But um, some, you know, a really tough match at the end for Mochi and a tough day in general. Yes. And really just... I, it, tough to dream of a better start for Hideaki. You know? Yeah, Hideaki is ahead 6-2. Uh, it's a huge lead. Uh, Mochi has to make a comeback, essentially. Mochi yeah. was playing super well and uh, kind of messed it up a bit with his uh, match four, where he made some, some quite actually quite a few blunders, uh, especially during the time trouble he had. And Hideaki was just playing so well. The average PR so far are 3.29 for Mochi and 2.68 for Hideaki. And that's with yeah. the deep XG++ analysis settings. Yeah, that for like average player at home might not sound by much, but that's a pretty wide margin. 0. 0.6 is a lot here. Like um, that's a lot for, for Mochi to make up. Of course, streaks like this happen all the time. There's still eight matches to go. So really anything can happen. Um, but I don't, you know, it, it would have been tough to guess that that anyone would have this big of a, a margin of lead after four matches. Definitely, yeah. Hideaki yeah. must be feeling good. But I'm looking forward to see the interview now. We did a pre-match interview here uh, before yeah. day two begins. So maybe we should just get into it, Nick. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Um, my condition today is like normal. I mean, not especially tired or anxious or I don't know. I mean, I'm very normal today. Well, um, I'm behind uh, four points. Uh, day one is, is uh, a disaster. Was a disaster. It was two six for me. Um, so I'd like to get some points back uh, to make it even at least. Or, you know, um, at least I want to play better than uh, day one. That's my uh, goal today. Thank you. Thank you. You know, the weather is very cold and uh, the wind is very chilly. And uh, so my head is cool, but my I can keep, keep my heart warm. So far, I, I mean, I played very well, and uh, I have a, a certain lead of four points, but um, that can't be the that can never be the safe lead. So I try not to be too defensive and uh, to play as usual. Okay, Nick, so we're back. Yeah, setting up at the board. That, those interviews were great. I really, um, you know, I, I understand Mochi's mindset. I really appreciate Hideaki's though, which is just, uh, you, you have to play your game, right? So you can't think about that you're ahead in the match or behind in it, that you're a, you've got a 6-2 lead. You just have to play your best backgammon. And I think um, something like what Mochi said, trying to play better than yesterday can be, you know, if you've got a specific thing you're cleaning up, great. 
but but thinking that way can be a trap you know it puts like additional pressure on you but yeah i agree that said i i think moji will do it you know i i don't think yesterday was his best day so. definitely not and uh, i like the the way mochi was looking as well he was very uh, humble uh he knew he had a terrible day uh he was obviously very unlucky as well and yes. uh, i think he looks very focused now like he now he has to, something to prove you know Oh, I agree, and that's something that I feel like the like many Japanese players bring to the game is just that humility of it, and always studying, and and they know things can go wrong, right? But they're always composed and trying to do their best. I I really appreciate that kind of focus on the game. I like it. And what happens here? So apparently the the umpire wasn't ready. The opening. Or he... Oh yeah, where's our, where's our spectator crew today? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so 2-1 here, so Hideaki knows that he, after an offensive move from Mochi, he should make an offensive move as well with the 2-1 and slot the 5-point. Yes. yes. It's theory. You play down after other people play down in general. So here Mochi has a small decision with the deuce. Yeah, what's, what's your thoughts on this? I guess, you know, you can't really get... I, cleaning up a blot makes some sense. I yeah, can see that. I mean, you don't really want to be loose on both sides of the board, but he is giving up quite an amount of flexibility yeah. by stacking up like he did here. So sure. apparently the engine preferred to play 24-22, which is more mm. flexible, a bit more loose, but you can take chances early in the game when the opponent hasn't yeah. developed anything yet in his front position. I feel like that's not a very common distribution of your back checkers, so that's a hard one to find, right? It's not something that leaps out at you as a good two. Yes. But you really were lacking productive twos everywhere else. You don't want to take yeah. your last spare off the midpoint. You love the flexibility you have with your your you know ten and nine point blots already. So yeah, really exactly. interesting third roll decision already. Look at this one. I I mean I'm impressed wow. that Mochi is even considering this move because it's actually a borderline decision. I think yeah. ninety nine percent of players, if not more, had just made the twenty two point there. Right, I was I was nexting that move already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is that uh, Hideaki has so little ammunition in the zone for a blitz, so Mochi doesn't need the anger right now. So he chooses to play flexible with the back checkers. Oh, that's a good shot. This yeah, anger he's definitely going to take at the edge of the prime. Well, that's exciting. It bodes well for his play today, right? That he's already seeing things that sharply and relatively yes. quickly, right? He could spend a lot of time trying to find that. Yes, yeah. yeah. Like in day one, he... he he seems to be struggling a little bit. I mean, obviously, he still played well, you know, and in three mm -hmm. of the four matches, he played really well, but uh, I think we're seeing a, a sharper, more intuitive Mochi today. That's great. This is uh, already three. kind of potentially yes. very complicated game gearing up with four checkers back for yes. Hideaki here. Yeah. It's uh, right. That's, of course, a hit. Uh, yeah. Mochi just got the double three, obviously a great shot, um, but in this format, you know, where, where the PR point is just as valuable as winning the match, sometimes it's difficult to get those doubles because that's where you can fall into a trap and make a mistake because they're yeah. more difficult to, to play well. Got more yeah, options. So many options, so many options, yeah. But Mochi did manage to find the best move. So did Hideaki here. Good play from Hideaki. 3-2, that's going to be a hit for sure. Yeah, and having kind of worked their way backwards from the start a little bit with three checkers back each, you know, you, you have to make some pure structural plays like that. Um, these can be really challenging games, though. We saw them make some mistakes in a game like this, in a very long game like this yesterday, too. You really have to mm -hmm. think hard about a lot of decisions. Um, mutual holds with an extra checker back can be, I mean, they're just so long and strange and, yeah, and strategic. Yeah, definitely. Yes. You know? <clears throat> it's a long game, yet. Yeah. Both players got lots of pips to go. This is a great example here too, right? <laughs> like it might be intuitive to just make that advanced anchor on the 21. You can hit. Like what do you do? You've got a lot yeah. of interesting options here. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I would have chosen the hit as well, like Hideaki. But as we see from the engine, it's actually slightly better to make the double anchor. And here the Mochi gets a dis similar decision. Do we hit yeah. or do we anchor up? But yeah. uh, when in doubt... This one... Yeah, with very few checkers in the zone and everything, the anchor isn't the idea. He's got four back, you know, you just, yeah. You do enough to prevent his, his blitz and attack by just hitting, I think, on the yes. bar point there. Okay, Mochi just takes a brief break there. Oh, Oof. that's a bad roll. Um, I think both of them has one, uh, one error so far oh. in the 30 millipoint range. So it's the PR race is even, more or less. 
Of uh, course, so we like this four, but then what's a good two with it? You know, on a fifth checker on the anchor, really. No, that's true. Uh, so we, if another we, tricky play. If we make the four prime, then we gotta play thirteen to eleven, and that is the right play, by the way, according to the it engine. Looks, it's another difficult one to do though, because it's it's very disconnected from your five checkers. Once you you might lose presence all the way from the twenty one to the eight, right? <laughs> yeah. That just becomes white. So I can see why he wants to make this play. It's a very stiff play. It's it not is, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Oh, he accidentally yeah. just bumped the board a little bit, so now the board is not... Ah, okay, it's pretty... pretty. Uh, okay, he chooses the ugly play. Yeah. Um, They're close. I definitely understand it. This yeah, is yeah. he chooses to keep the midpoint. It's just so ugly. Sure. Good play here for Mochi. wants to be on the edge of the prime. Yeah. yeah. Get some good distribution. And this is one of those positions where even before you roll your dice, your hand is already over on the stack on the 22 point. <laughs> That's the old yeah. falafel uh, idea. He used to tell me that uh, you gotta know which checkers you want to move even before. So your hand yeah. should already be over there before you see what that dice you roll. Because yeah, the this is going to be a great shot for sure. Yeah. Awesome shot. Um, can he double here? I don't think there are any. S oh, maybe that's a bad one. Oh yeah. Maybe I now think he so, can. Though. Yeah, yeah. Now he can double definitely. That loss of connection there when. Hidiak yeah. is forced to give up the, the midpoint. Uh, that's really, really bad. So yeah, now the cube is coming and now the pressure is on Hidiaki. Even without losing the midpoint, like he's very stiff over there and, you know, has four or five checkers behind with uh, with yes. uh, Mochi only having one back. And he oh, passes. look, he passes. Yeah. That was that a big looks... take. Yeah. That was a big take. He had the counter play. There was a lot of contact. If he just manages to release some of the back checkers into the outfield, then he has a good game. The new 2021 Galaxy Earthboard is a tournament luxury board optimized for travel. Pre-order now. Details in the description below. I'm yeah. surprised that he didn't take some time there, actually, because I didn't... First of all, uh, it was a wrong decision he came up with, uh, so he should have spent time. And second of all, I think he should have even identified that this is a big decision. I should spend some time, you know? He just passed it so fast. Yeah. I don't know. That's those. It's not too surprising to me. It's uh, it's five checkers back, right? It's pretty easy to look at it. Just like I have four more checkers back than my opponent. Um, what am I doing? Why do I want to play this? <laughs> you know. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, that's a tricky one for me. I would uh, I would have been inclined to do the same thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. Not that I found it super easy either. I hope I I could have found the take uh, ninety plus percent of the time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised here from uh, Hideaki. He's off to a it's bad start. It's a very start. bold take. Yeah. yeah, he's off very to a bad bold. start in game in, in match two. Oh, sorry, in match in day two, match five. Mm -hmm. That's where we are. Yeah, I'll say it's easy to look at those positions sometimes and say things like, if I just escape a checker, then I've got a good game. Yeah. You know, but, but if you're saying if a little too often, a lot of times you're supposed to just drop those too, you know? I don't notice know. Hideaki just made a small inaccuracy again. He should have slotted the five point there. Oh, that's a really interesting play. It is. Yeah. It is. It, you're forcing your opponent to break the anchor to hit, and mm -hmm. it's not. It wasn't like super good to split against a little bit of a stacked front position from Mochi. Yeah. So now yeah, we're it's heading. Yeah, perfect usage of that checker too. It's going to be difficult to make the the five point naturally with both those checkers. Otherwise. Yes, so. that's true. Yeah. And you get a big discount because of the the fact that he, Mochi has to break his anger to hit. Mm -hmm. Slotting plays with, with an ace, slotting the 5 from the 6 point, is often correct against the 21 point anger or 22 point anger. This is kind of maybe one of the more simple games we've seen so far. Yeah. It's just developing into a pretty intuitive mutual holding game. Yeah. There's a little bit of priming going on here. Maybe yeah. it's a little bit too soon to call it a mutual holding game. Yeah, you, maybe you could call okay. it a mutual holding game. But there is some... Yeah. Pr both players have a little bit of prime. Not not really, but I mean, even just like the three prime, prime of Mochi is providing an obstacle for for right. Hideaki to move freely. And when he eventually does run from the anger, then he can attack. Yeah. And there it is, decision time. I'm <laughs> glad they're... Oh, they're checking to see if the... <laughs> oh, this is good. <laughs> it looks like a legal die to me. I think that was a traditional Japanese dance that they were just doing. Right there. <laughs> Forget the name of it. Oh, yeah. what a cool moment! <laughs> Look at Hiyaki still. We need a, a. We cut. need a. Then we need the umpire to come in and make a decision. 
I believe this is probably my uh, least favorite part of of live backgammon, to be honest. You know, like I'm, they're both nice players, and they hate having to do this, and you hate being yeah. in a situation where you have to check if it's legal or not. Yes. You know, like you both just want to play fair. Look right? at this. But, now I the mean, umpire comes. comes. Yeah. And he has to make a decision: is this die legal? <laughs> I think he's got to go back and get like a high resolution camera for this one. <laughs> this was when oh. they were changing. Ah. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I, I think he decided that it was. I, you know what? I think because it shouldn't really be possible because the checkers are flat. But if the die is like perfectly situated on the edge, like just balancing and it doesn't really yeah. have a full surface contact, I think that was oh, the case here, you know? <laughs> That's too bad. I really wanted to know what the play was going to be with six five. Yeah, there's an opportunity to look at running, right? And I don't, I don't know if that's you probably out of time to do anything else. Yeah, that's actually yeah. true. Six five was a more difficult move, definitely, than uh, five one. Yeah, that was a fun situation. That was when the the United States adopted the USPGF adopted the dice on checker rule. That was, everyone was up in arms about how that was going to be happening every roll. Yeah. <laughs> you know. But it never really happens. Yeah, but I mean, it's, a, it's actually the first time I see it when, when you yeah. have a doubt situation where it's not obvious whether the... I've never seen yeah. it before. <laughs> it didn't happen in the in the in in last year's final uh, in all the matches. Yeah. And yeah, so it's pretty That's fun. That's pretty easy. You just call someone over and they make a call and like, yeah. who cares, right? <laughs> <laughs> and And we still spend less time rolling dice than we would have if they had played without the rule because now we just lost one minute for him to come oh. in but imagine how much time you lose during an entire match re-rolling every time a, a die lands on a checker yeah i agree well this is an interesting kind of do you want to stay pure and leave a shot or not um very interesting with that open five that it's a viable option to just break the eight i, I like that it consideration is. that's yeah. true you have the better inner board there's the blot on the ace point so you get a discount yeah. however the race is so close that you don't want to lose your race equity by getting hit so that was a decision for mochi right oh this is not a great role he's gonna survive it he's gonna survive but, uh, it's he's running out of timing and the prime's really paying off down in the yeah. side. I mean, I'm not sure whether it was good or bad because uh, it was poor. It was bad for timing, but it was good for the race. And those two effects counteract each one another. Sure. Yeah, I like this. Covering the ace seems natural since Mochi's very likely to want to leave very soon. Yeah, I agree, Nick. Exactly. Mochi is running out of timing. That's why Hideaki prefers to have a solid position now rather than right. a flexible position, which brings us all the position in the future. Yep. Now we have a dead checker. Yeah. And Mochi is really struggling here. Um, but Hideaki doesn't have a ton of time either. Okay, look about, look, what about this play? Is it going to be the double Falcon or is it going to be making the golden point? Wow. These are, and the funny thing is like, the first thing I see is just running all the way, of course. <laughs> I think the <laughs> double Falcon is definitely better be than running. Yeah, you can see yeah, running yeah. is a big mistake. Yeah. Because you yeah. need more shots. Yeah, that's the question. Do we make the... He, okay, he oh, makes he the golden does. point. It's slightly inferior according to four ply from the engine. Interesting. I wonder if he feels like he was getting in more timing trouble than he wanted to towards the end of yesterday because he's making some... He's, he's just going with his gut on a lot of these plays. You notice that's that? True. Like things that he could yeah. be thinking about. He's saving a lot of clock time. And what about this position? He has a great timing advantage here, Hideaki. Oh, yes, it's a big double. It oh, he doesn't double. He doesn't wow. realize how strong of a position this is. I don't either. I would not consider that. Look this, at the timing. Looks... Look at how much Rolls plays now. But he's also down in the race, right? So, I mean, I guess Mochi can be pulled off his anchor and lose that way, but I, I wouldn't have seen it. Okay, that's a and great this is... shot from Mochi. Imagine, like, taking the cube and then he rolls yeah. this and now you're just losing, right? Oh, yes. I mean, but obviously this was the, the best, best thing. almost the best possible uh, sequence for Mochi. If, if, if it had been 6-4, I think he would have lost his market, actually. Yeah. This is a... I like the consideration of this bold play with two dead checkers behind, a blot on the ace. I agree. Like, you've got to find some contact, and I think he can afford to do this. I don't think he's really given up much. But I think that. it's totally the right idea. It's not even a yeah. direct shot, which means that Mochi has to use both dice to hit him and then he will get uh, yeah. the chance to re-hit the checker on the oh, oh yeah. this is a bad play Hideaki see mm -hmm. this is the problem is that the alternative is killing a checker and like right now you have the huge advantage in board strength and yeah. purity and you don't want to give that up 
So, yeah, so that's exactly. kind of why you have to come off with that five. But yeah, it's it's that you you, you don't want to kill checkers, and it's also for contact. You're coming out for contact. It's actually yeah. helping your contact value. You're yeah. Getting hit. Yeah, that's the play, Hideaki. Come on. Yeah, that's the play. I think maybe he just needs to to calculate the numbers in his mind. It's a little scary to do that. You know, it's always it's a good time to spend some time when you're thinking about leaving your anchor. Cause, Definitely. I mean, if it's, I'm teaching like an intermediate or beginner or something like that, I would just tell him never do it. Just don't yeah. leave your anchor. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> Wait for the big doubles. No, no, this is exactly. the expert play. This is where he should show the world that he he knows how to play backgammon. Mm -hmm. Good play, Hideaki. Very strong play. Very good. Even finds like the technical best play among them too. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. Well, so um, if he's gonna have a rusty game, he might as well do it all at once and play a ten. <laughs> while Mochi plays a point six. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> uh, I don't think this is a cube for Mochi. He's up twelve pips, but uh, there's so much contact here. If he, yeah, look, it's a very big no double. If Mochi had closed his ace point. If we took one yeah. of the checkers from the deuce point and put him on the ace point, then the position would be way stronger because then all of his fly shots would be way more deadly than they are now. Yeah. But when he hits with a fly shot, Hideaki is a favorite to do something, either anchor or hit. Right? Yeah. yeah. So Anchor gonna... is not that scary for, for Mochi, to be honest, because he's then he would be way ahead in the race and very little contact. I would argue that it is because Mochi still has two checkers to bring home. You know, and so you're you're so far from winning that game that you don't really but, like Hideaki to have the cube in that situation. But one of the checkers would be hitting, so one of them is already almost in yeah. in, in the home. Yeah, I don't but think I mean, it's too much contact value he would get from it. But I mean, the direct shot is is huge. Yeah, I think I, I hope, think if he go ahead. I hope Mochi doesn't overthink this position. Yeah. Well, he's just going to do some calculating and think about how it goes, yeah. right? And I think he tends to find the right thing in these spots. But yeah, back to if he hits the indirect, I think. So if we take that checker on the 16 for Hideaki and put it on the anchor and swap it with one of the white checkers, I think that's a take for black, right? If you if you remain, uh, if you keep the two white checkers of Mochi on the 16 and 17 point. No, then I'm it's talking about the sequence where white hits and then And black then he anchors, anchors. up. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's still a tank. No, tank. I don't think so. You haven't lost your market. Oh, no, you, you definitely lost your market, for sure. Yeah. Okay, we good. We should look at that one. Yeah. Good, good decision, uh, Mochi. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just uh, he doesn't have too, too much work to do to get home. One checker has to move three pips, and then it's just one last checker. Um, I think he would have lost his market. Oh, look at this play. That's interesting looking. Yeah, I'm just immediately looking at the... I mean, the top play is pretty intuitive, right? You you safety your blots, hope to play the race, play safe. Wow, he Does makes the all play. Oh, that's a very, very strange. And Hideaki is missing a cube from the bar. <laughs> so he just did a huge double. Look oh. at the numbers on that, though. Double that's not wabba. an intuitive. It's just like a high volatility one. That's a it's a last roll thing, right? Yes, it's exactly. Gonna, and now he's going to win a gammon. market and win gammons a ton of the time. Yeah, that's wild. I mean, those if are you, hard cubes to find, I think. It's a it's an action cube. I don't know. I mean, if Mochi knew that Hideaki wasn't gonna double, then it's probably a good play to make the switching play. But so now, uh, now does he is he claiming or playing on? He must be playing on here, right? I think this so. Is, I mean, everything oh. hits. He has the stronger inner board. Mochi has the crunch crunch three checkers already. Yeah. Yeah, we can see the equities. It's way too good. Way, 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 yeah. way, way too good to double. He's just destroying Mochi on, I mean, even worst case scenario, he still has a good game. Yeah. If somehow he misses and then gets hit, then Mochi still has just a trash board and he probably has yeah. to pass if he sends a cube, right? So, yeah. Oh, Mochi's PR just went up to seven and Hideaki is, is at 13 and a half. Obviously, they're gonna, the PRs are going to be grinded down mm -hmm. throughout the rest of the match, but it's fun to see, you know, they've been playing so well and then... Uh, yeah, then we see this these PRs so far in game two. Ooh, massively too good, yeah. It's interesting though. I, I love to see it when when two players are just kind of similarly misevaluating position. It's confusing to them both clearly, right? Like they neither no, one. No, seems no, no, no. Not Mochi. Mochi is not confused. He was just well, earlier, he just made a bad play. He was considering making the cube before his back play too, ah. and that was way off, right? That was he was out of the ballpark by two hundred fifty. Yeah. So 
like there's something going on here where they're both kind of Mochi's side looks a little better than it is to both of them. I oh, think. look, look at this, Nick. Mochi's blunder was a, almost a 400 blunder. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he thinks that's the play he needs to make there, too. That's, that's interesting. I'm not sure what he was seeing with that play. Uh, yeah. I really, uh, wow. He should just play safe in that other position. And, yeah, but, why not? But what about Hideaki? Is he going to make uh, a, an equally sized blunder here? <laughs> I mean, I, you know what? I, I kind of like Mochi's uh, attitude today, and I like many of the plays he made, and then all of a sudden he makes this huge 400 blunder. <laughs> yeah, I really don't understand what that sequence was about. That no. was interesting. Very interesting. And Hideaki is kind of not really himself today. Maybe he's getting nervous because of the lead, or... Okay, good, he chooses to roll. Good decision, I think... Hideaki. This could be an experience thing, because for, for me, this is yeah. kind of... I would have to think about this to con like be sure that it's too good as well. Uh -huh. like, it okay. doesn't look like a 450 too good to me as well. Okay. Um, yeah. But I think know, the, the giveaway is the crunch in uh, Mochi's position. Mm -hmm. That makes his yes. position so weak. And uh... and that's a thing that you develop a feel for, but it's it's not intuitive to look at for the first time, right? Like, yeah, the first time you be... see it, you don't know that that's how obvious that is eventually. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually, I don't, th I don't feel like Hideaki is off his game necessarily. I think he's running into challenging positions for himself. Could be. You know? Yeah. Or, cases. yeah. or it could be positions that might be challenging for Hideaki because maybe he's lagging a little bit of experience, but he's, yeah. man he's got the brain power and the knowledge to figure it out over the board. Yeah. Yeah, I will. We did, like we said, though, he does seem to be making some decisions faster and kind of conscious of the timing trouble making sure that he doesn't get in that spot again. So that could be affecting him. Maybe he's just not playing his best game because of that. Yeah, I mean, the PR, uh, high PR came from the two doubling uh, blunders in particular. Uh, so I, I guess we just found a little leak in the Hideaki's game. Yeah. And this happens to all of us, you know, we, we get into some sure. positions where where we just yeah. didn't really see, see the position clearly. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I don't know, for whatever it's worth, I, I don't think I'm considering either of those cubes either like i, I think okay. i'm just i don't think i would even think about it yeah. so i can definitely understand how those got missed mm -hmm. it was a uh, classical action cubes with super mm -hmm. super high volatility yeah and uh, i think the giveaway was the crunch in, in mochi's position that's where the yeah. weakness really comes from mm -hmm. all right but he's off to a good start to just you know get another match win Uh, some not the safest bear off distribution for Hideaki, so he's oh. very likely to do this and leave a shot, but it's hard yeah. for Mochi to punish it. Could save a gammon with something like this, though. Oh, yeah, or he could lose a backgammon. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Play the ace first. Yeah, yeah. he saw it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, Ooh. that's nasty. It's getting, it's getting real. A set is like a favorite to win a backgammon now. Yeah, wow, the two is no good. That doesn't help. Oh, he's... Mochi. <laughs> no more fanning, Mochi. Okay. <laughs> okay and it's saved. Not... Yep. It's safe. But Mochi is going to make the move and get the decision because it matters for the PR point. Is he... Can you save the G? No. Okay, Mochi didn't want the decision. Improve your backgammon skills by reading the best books on the market. Available on Amazon. Links in the description below. This is maybe also an honor thing that uh, <laughs> he doesn't want the artificial inflated uh, PR with uh, a ridiculous decision. So that's actually pretty cool from Mochi there. Didn't yeah. I mean, I would I would have probably taken that decision <laughs> just to get one more decision in the match. The, the, yeah, all the the PR battle stratting is it's man, I can't handle it. Yeah. I, I, I love hearing people talk about it, but I'm, I I could never imagine trying to think about implementing that over the board. I just want to try to play good backgammon, you know? Yeah, the same with Why Mochi. do I want to add that? Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, and we're playing on the, the backgammon Galaxy Neptune board. That was the 2020 Galaxy board, limited edition. Yeah. And uh, the viewers have been seeing the, the new 2021 Galaxy board, the Earth board in the oh, ads nice. in between games so both of them are really really nice setups 
Yes, and we have a little surprise for day three, but uh, can't talk too much about it yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the PRs uh, are not pretty so far. Oh, this is tricky. I don't... He's going straight for this play, but I immediately am looking at that back checker on the 24, thinking, why do I want to be primed back there, you know? Ah, no, no, I think it's good now. It's a goalkeeper because he's, a, he's down 17 pips. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. right now it, it's it's fine as it is. It adds yeah. the extra contact. Yeah, and making Just that, the three make it is, is an asset. It's behind the anchor, so I'm not super excited about doing that either. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. This is tricky now too. He doesn't really have a fourth four if he plays all three mm -hmm. down to the nine. Yes, kind of a challenge. So maybe he makes the five. Maybe there's something else completely. Yeah. It's a tricky little move. So Hideaki Actually, is ahead in the race with 17 pips before the move. So he's going to be ahead 31 yeah. pips. Therefore, he should get the back anger moving. And oh, this is sharp. This is sharp. Yes, good play. I mean, the first but, two uh, should be clear to run. However, it isn't actually because you also have the alternative of 13 to 5, you know. Big, I was looking the, at that. And then the 16 and 2 looks kind of like an intriguing move to me as well. Oh, um, yeah. But, after seeing him make 16 and 9, I like that it's not that exciting to use an ace to hit. You still have kind of coverage from the, from that 16 point to hit back, possibly. Yeah. You know, it's not as scary as it looks to give up the midpoint. You just no. made a new midpoint, kind of, right? It's, so. it, yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's kind of like a pay now or pay later uh, yeah. move. And, and you're getting a good, a really big asset out of it because the nine point is is good both in terms of priming because it's still a little bit early. It's not quite a defined state yet, so priming is still quite useful. And it's a super good landing spot for the yeah. remaining three checkers in the outfield. Very good play. Very good play, yeah, from Hideaki. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna see the PR start to go down, probably. Mochi here, can he find the super flexible play or is he just going to slot the five on the four? Which is probably what I would do. Okay, look at how sharp he is. Wow. Cool play. He found it. Yeah. Very, like very sharp one. play. I'm looking at the 10. I don't think he... It makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Oh, this is a great shot. Yeah. That's a pretty good shot, yes. Now it's a defined state. So we're, yeah. he's at a, in a 21-point in a holding game with a goalkeeper. So it's a good position for Hideaki here. He's got a nice structure. It's not that Hideaki wants to prime. Hideaki wants to just bring his checkers home. But the structure he has in the outfield is very useful because it makes it easy for the remaining yeah. back checkers to come home. Uh, but he needs to start making some inner points as well. So he's got some landing spots in the in inside as well. Yeah. And another way to see that, like he's got the liability of the five checkers on the six. He kind of mm -hmm. needs to develop those somehow, and it's not going to be easy to do so. Yeah. So he might have to take a risk soon, but if he gets away with that risk, he's probably got the game pretty much won from there. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, so because this role could be where he does that, uh, we're really close to cube territory, right? Yes. I mean, it's like you, just yeah. short of a cube. and I think, But I think it's because even if he, let's say he rolls a, a great shot, like 6-1, He's not going to lose his market by much, you know, it's, it's barely a market loss. So the cube is not quite yeah. efficient enough from, from this position. He needs to just make one more improvement. Yeah. And, and then the cube should, like, for instance, clearing the midpoint. Uh, yeah. Neither clearing the midpoint or making the five is a game winner. You still have to, if you make the five, then you still have to clear the midpoint and vice versa. Ooh, what a shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. I mean, it's, it's not, not a big deal to double there, obviously, uh, from Ooh, Hiyaki. great return. Yeah. And you could even I argue that he's keeping his own PR low because he's not giving himself more, multiple decisions. Mm -hmm. Oh, 6-3. Well, yeah, I think the other reason you like to send a cube there is we were talking about possibly needing to take a risk like slotting the 5 or, or hitting loose on the ace to kind of finish this position. Um, and I think you generally want to send the cube before you do that, right? You don't want to like get be too good after you do that or something yeah, like that yeah. and just get a really efficient cube yes um, that's true so but but the yeah, thing you, was that you you weren't going to be too good you still have mm -hmm. if you make the five point then you still need to clear the midpoint if you clear mm -hmm. the midpoint you still have to make the five point you know so mm -hmm. it was just one step short of, of a cube and we mm -hmm. just saw a little inaccuracy from hideaki uh with the hitting in the outfield but it was a very tricky play he had three alternatives basically Oh, I didn't see what the better play would have been. Could he just make the five point? The or five point like that? was the best play, yes. Even though it oh, doesn't wow. double hit. Oh, that's interesting. That 
I, you know, I just looked at 13 to 11 and what's my five in that position yeah. right there. But he just saves these up and tries to play the race. That makes a lot of sense. And now Mochi establishes the, the most shallow back games of them all, the 5-4 mm -hmm. back game. And yeah. this is especially strong in the Baron phase, which is exactly what Hideaki is in here. So Mochi yeah. actually got a pretty good position now. Yeah, this is great. It doesn't play like other back games, but there's very little gammon risk in these spots when you have the two, the five, and the four, yeah. or sorry, the 20 and 21. Yes. So, yeah, you still get some wins from contact. Ooh, um, that's a good shot. Mm -hmm. That's a great shot. Creates robustness, flexibility. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shot. But even if Hideaki were to double, it was to double from this position, it would still be a take. Yes, yeah, it looks that way. The contact is very good for me. Yeah, there he just lost his market, his hypothetical market. Of course, the cube is already in play, but this was yeah. probably the swing where Mochi can't take the cube anymore. Yeah, I think it's interesting too that if you look, the numbers aren't like back back game numbers; they're like holding game numbers, though. Yeah. Right? Oh, you have a that little bit higher gammon rates. Like uh, I think he's at a sixteen percent now, or something like this, right? Right. But usually 17. a back game cube, like the gammons are like 30 to 40% True. and you're winning about 60%. And yeah. that's when you're getting close to losing your market. You know? yes. So yeah, definitely not playing like a back game. It's It plays more like a holding game, but it's got better contact than usual, even with just the three or four points left. Yeah, exactly. Clear. It's the, the shallower the back game is, the more of a holding game style it becomes. And the deeper mm -hmm. the back game is, the deepest one is the ace-deuce back game. Uh, mm -hmm. And then and with the ace deuce back game, you need to be down 100 pips or so to have sufficient timing. Mm -hmm. With the 5-4 back game, you don't need to be as much down. You can be, the timing sweet spot is my, like between 55 and 75 pips Yeah, that you have to this be is down. A, this is a typical way for this to develop too, where Hideaki ends up with all his checkers on the three deuce and ace, yeah. right? Before he even takes one off. Um, which makes it very difficult to, to bear off quickly, win a gammon, all these kinds of things. Yes. And Mochi is going to leave his blot on the 20 point, so he get the double double shot if Hideaki was to roll a 6-3, double 6, double 5. Mm -hmm. It's the extra contact. Yeah. He's thinking about whether he wants to give up the pick and passes with the two, I'm sure. Things like that in one. Yeah. But he like, probably greatly improves some rolls by staying there. Uh, those can be tough to figure out mathematically, but I'm inclined yeah. to just stay for the contact. Yeah, actually it was pretty close. Uh, yeah. my, my idea was, oh, the 5-3 as well. I didn't even consider 5-3. I was thinking yeah. about 6-3, but of course 5-3, maybe 4-3 as well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so there were and more. now trailing in the match, he's got a decision here. Because oh, yeah. if he hits, he's going to lose his market. Yeah. Um, but he's not really saving, yeah, there's not really gammons either way too much in this position. The problem for Mochi here is that when he hits, it's not a 100% win. There is a little bit of wiggle room that Hideaki could be lucky to roll a 6-1 from the bar. Yeah, um, so look, at this. I think, look how close this is. Yeah, that's why it's not a double. It's not, if, if, if his hitters were, were actually game winners, or that are pretty close to it, like for instance, if he had the board closed already, mm -hmm. then it would be a double, because then it would be like a last roll position where he's got a slight edge. He's got um, 20 hitters here, so he's yeah. a 56 and a half percent favorite. Uh, to hit, and that's actually more or less the same as his winning chances. Yeah. Well, the other thing about this, though, is that when he does hit, there's going to be uh, one three, one four, one five from the bar are going to free up another checker, that's and a good point. and Hideaki could really lose a gammon here, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's you're saying a couple of ands to get there, so it's not going to show up in a high percentage of gammons, but I it's something that would push me toward a cube is that yeah. there's a little extra crashing risk. And yeah. of course, we have to remember the, the main reason to redouble is that he's down in the match. He's six away, five away. So yeah. you, when you're down in the match, you become more and more aggressive with the recube, even just yes. down one point. Yeah, not a normal match score or money recube by any means. Yes. Um, the other thing you mentioned, if he was closed out, it'd be easier. I think it's probably a step better even if we take the spare from the six and cover the seven. So I agree. Have the prime to crack him as well. Exactly, right? exactly. You're That's right. A key feature. You really like to have the ace open in these spots. You're right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Either way, I think we would have a we would have a double here, if it's mm -hmm. the ace point or the seven point that we own. Yeah. Uh, just because then, I mean, the volatility is simply higher because he can win the game by hitting the, sh the shot. 
yeah this is not quite the game the case here okay he picks up the wow. dice good decision mochi very good decision okay great technical understanding but yeah the issue with it that you don't like here is like i guess you'd continue to the 13 i would think yeah but don't you have to take a roll if he comes in now <laughs> like if you're he comes just too in, good yes if he comes in okay, totally oh, yeah. totally but okay, i mean you, you can win yeah. four points you know it's it's if you actually if you redouble your gammons are not uh fully evaluated yeah so but so this is the swing, right? Like when it works, you you can end up too good, even if it's just by a mar like small margin. I think you're too good pretty often. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But at least he gets a full price for his gammons. That's true. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna. And yeah. That's the thing. He, 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 if he redoubles, he doesn't get a full price for the gammons. Oh yeah. Sorry, I wasn't. I was misunderstanding that. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah. He reduces the value of the gammons that he's gonna play on for. Yes. Wow. So that may be swinging. That in. The, this decision, decision as well. Mm -hmm. Great decision from Mochi here. I mean, yes. except for the huge checker play blunder, <laughs> he's playing really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a very strange one. I'm not. I'm still super curious what that was about. Yeah. You know? The, the inside, hidden hidden cover. It's a classical Sandal Lila play. I know that he loves these plays. I think he found one as well last year in the final. Yeah. Uh, where you like you hit and you switch inner points. Uh, yeah. It's a typical blitzing style move because you're you're trading off purity uh, yeah. to gain the the tempo of the hit. Mm -hmm. um, but this in this case it was just the wrong idea because you were outboarded. So it's better sure. just to play safe for Mochi and have a mm -hmm. holding game or a racing style position yeah. rather than a blitz attack. That's a very good way of explaining how he might have arrived at that play, though. Maybe he decided his game plan was blitz, right? Yeah. And that's that's how he concluded uh, to do that. Yeah, ripping seems good here. Yes. But uh, Hideaki entering with the six is going to greatly reduce the gammon, so he's in good shape with that roll. And Mochi gets to grind his PR down here with some easy decisions. Okay, this one's yeah. not... A... Oh, yeah, it is a decision. <laughs> it is a decision. <laughs> <laughs> a decision in extreme gammon is any choice where there's an equity difference between two, two different decisions, two different choices, two different yeah. moves. Maybe not the best measure, but it's the measure that we have. I yeah. don't know what would be a better one. You yes. Know? Okay. So there's the shot, and Hideaki mm -hmm. hasn't got a decision, hasn't had a decision for many rolls now. Yet again, no decision, because there's yeah. no moves. Okay. He has to leave another shot. I think you just bear off aggressively, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here, you get a roll closer to to the gammon, so it makes yes. some sense to me. And notice that find you, yeah, like that. Notice that Mochi's winning chances were already up above ninety eight percent before Hideaki rolled the dice, <laughs> which mm, just goes yeah. to show how difficult it is to win a game when you're completely crunched with your front position. Yeah, near impossible. Oh yeah, so you. I think he reaches for the efficient gammon save, but then realizes that he can't lose a back gammon here, so it needs yeah. to come out. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a big blunder just to play 16 <laughs> to 6. Yeah. It's perfect. It goes like two crossovers. I yeah. <laughs> okay, he finds a good play here. Okay, Mochi. So what do we need now? Double fours? Not going to work. Yeah, so we need double better. fives or better. Gammon for Mochi. So Mochi's getting a little bit of luck. I mean, there we go. Yeah. He's got some in the bank because he lost four out of four matches in day one. This is the TakePoint Backgammon Scoreboard, a scoreboard for winners. Order yours now on TakePoint.pro. Hey guys, this is Ralph from Melbourne Backgammon International. Looking forward to see you on Galaxy real soon. Yeah, <laughs> looks to be a great start for him. You know, he's got uh, great equity to win the, the match point. The PR point's looking really good too. You know, he's got a comfortable margin there. Yeah, Mochi, I mean, if he could win two points here in this in this match, he's, he's, back, in the, he's back in the match. Oh yeah, yeah. And he's back sure. in the in, in the contention. Mm -hmm. But let's Two see. Two eight five away, super fun score. Yes, so that means that uh, Mochi is a seventy five percent favorite in this match. Four mm -hmm. three, yeah. He chooses the the top choice from Extreme Gammon. Yeah. It's a match score thing. The split becomes marginally better when you're leading, and you don't want to play for gammons. Yeah. Six one, a little bit of a decision here for Mochi because look at the duplication. If he plays yeah. thirteen to seven, you've got the sixes duplicated because that's what Hideaki yeah. wants to play from ten to four. 
perfect with I'm it. I'm simple, though. I'm just going for the distraction with all the blots out there. Like, he wants to spend his roll covering the four, so, That's the so let him. Play. That's yeah. the normal play. Maybe we put some pressure on that blot on the ten, yeah. you know, with some rolls. He did find the best play, and it was, a, it was the right play. Um, but it would have been fun if he if played the other one. <laughs> sure. <laughs> this is a great example. Play. So now he can't really do anything about safetying that blot. Um, oh, yeah, the, that's an interesting look. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, like, I mean, it's the, it's the last spare on the six, so yes. I don't want to do it. But wow. it disconnects the checker. Yeah. Wow, that's wow. a good play. Good that's time, a really yeah. good play. Yeah, exactly. It disconnects the back checkers. That's the, that's the idea. And it gains yeah. a huge amount of tempo because Mochi is yeah. either about to, to make an anger or about to develop his front position. This is a sneaky position, too. Uh, I think you just make the asset, but yes. it's tempting to try to get your checker on the 18 closer to home. He's under a triple shot right now. Uh, no, no, that's fine. I mean, you, you can make the nine point. It's better. Yeah. Just make the yeah. nine point. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, for the viewers at home, the move of Hideaki hitting with six to one with the last spare checker on the six point is not a recommended play, usually. Hideaki did super well <laughs> by finding the exception, you know. It's, yeah. uh... Oh, and here's another one. We had this come up um, in one of our earlier streams, but I'm all in on the blitz here for sure, especially at the score, thinking 13 to 9, but Hideaki finds the correct split instead wow, yeah. to, Again. to play the both game plans like yes. you talked about. Yeah. yeah, The balancing play, the connectivity during blitz. Wow, yeah. look at this. That's a great Ooh, shot. Oh, this is a fun decision. <laughs> yeah. So you can anchor or you can hit, right? Which, yes. Which you can, I don't is know. it automatic to you? Oh, look at yeah. this. It's completely borderline. Yeah. When in doubt, hit. That's a good mantra. The, the um, score makes it more confusing, too. I think yes. this is more automatic, automatic for money to just hit because yeah. he's only got the eight checkers in the zone and three totally. back now. The yeah. score indicated that uh, we want the golden point anger, so we, we're not going to lose a gammon. And look yeah. what happened. The best reply from Hideaki. <laughs> yeah, this could get dangerous. Man, yeah, this, this is a double. This might be a, yeah, maybe it's a pass at the score. It could be a pass at this score. Yeah, it yeah. is a pass. It is a big pass, actually. That's a huge swing. I mean, roll double fives is one of the best rolls. Then you fan on a three-point board. Yes. That should probably be a market-losing sequence, yeah. right? It's I a think, pretty lucky sequence. I think Mochi knows this is a take for money, but maybe he should, <laughs> if he applies your rule, Nick, if he considers, is this a take or pass for money, and then just adjust with one step to one yeah. side in, in terms of the match. So if he thinks that this is still a double for money, he should probably be able to find the pass here because yeah. that would shift the doubling window one step down the line. And I think the key feature too at many of these trailing scores is just, um, so the 7% gammons that white gets don't matter anymore. You don't get to factor them in. Yes. The 33% gammons on, on blue side are worth more than usual, right? So if you can see that it's a gammonish position, that there's a lot at risk, like you kind of have to let those go when you're leaving. It's just too much swing in the match. Yeah. Get the official UBC 2020 final merchandise. All sales go to support the UBC team and volunteers. Mochi correctly passes. A very good pass from Mochi because you could easily yeah. get tempted into taking this uh, position. Right. You could, Mochi knows that he's going to win a lot of the games, but it's too scary. He protects his lead and he tries and to win. And now we get to here. the most exciting score in backgammon, I think. This is. Uh, some 50-50 positions that can be close to passes kind of thing, right? <laughs> yeah, if the gammon rate is high enough. Right, yeah, you get a full one value instead of half value on your gammon, so they're yes. almost as good as they can be without a recube or something like that involved. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so the score here, four away, two away, this is what we call gammon go, because yeah. if Hideaki uh, doubles, then his gammons will win him the match directly. Therefore, his cube strategy is to be extremely aggressive, extremely mm -hmm. aggressive, if there's just the slightest chance of winning a gammon. And yeah. likewise, Mochi's cube strategy is to be extremely cautious. He yeah. does not want to lose a gammon here. Oh, wow, look at this. Uh, he could run all the way, but of course he needs to make the eight point. Yeah, and come yeah. down. And he's safety of lot anyway. Yeah, this looks great. So, so he's, in the, he's in the driver's seat. This, um, yes. This could resolve into the kind of position that he can cash, but again, it's it's very tough to get a cube in two away against four away, right? It is. You hand it over and you play for the match. Yeah. Exactly. So if Mochi doubles, you play for the match. Exactly. So Hideaki's yeah. take point is going to be 19% because yeah, he can just lower. drop and then he's down four away, one away, crawl forward, and that's 
that's a yeah, about situation where you got a, around 19%, 18.6 or something like this, according to XG. Yeah. So the 508 2 away score is cool because the the raw take point in races is as low as it gets pretty much on an initial cube. Yes, for the that's leader, true. Which is really interesting. Yes, that's true. Uh, less so here, but a little lower still. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Gammons is kind of more fun. So that's I like this. <laughs> yeah. This is the coolest score to me. <laughs> okay, so Hideagi's got a big weakness here that the three checkers on the on Mochi's ace point. Yeah, but again, this is the kind of thing that you'd probably be thinking about a cube here because of that. Yeah, yeah, but at yeah. the score, you can't. You just can't think about it. Look at the deuce here, uh, Nick. Yeah, exactly. You shouldn't hit. Exactly. The hitting play is the normal play. It's almost an oh, automatic wow. play, but it's a small error here because you, you, you're you scared of the gammons. So you you shouldn't create blots in the position. You should just play safe. Yeah, those I... Man, I thought about checker adjustments at scores for a while, and I mostly ignore them now. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're very hard to find. And look at the sequence. It's the worst possible Ooh, sequence for Mochi. Now, now I think this could oh, yes. very well be a cube. This oh, is yes, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. So this much score, volatility. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Yeah, this is what you this, talked about, Nick. It's, exactly. Uh, 51.5% winning chances for Hideagi, but it's a huge blunder yeah. not to cube. This and is it, like a money, clear money beaver, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And, I mean, there's blunder potential here for Mochi. This, yeah, is he's got not a, an, this is not an easy position. Hideaki has four checkers back and an inefficient point on the two. So I, I think he's going to find the take pretty easily here. It's unpleasant, for sure. <sighs> but, like, I mean, you just, when you know it's a beaver, which Mochi knows, right? Like, I think he's probably going to find a, a take even at the score. So, yeah. I'm scared. I'm really yeah. scared. I have to say, I think there's blunder potential here. Yeah. I could see Mochi passing this. Yeah. I mean, his structure is so good, he's going to find that. He's still got the better board, technically. I mean, the, oh, the main good thing take, he has Mochi. is the initiative. Yeah. Good take, Mochi. Very, very good take. Because this was scary. This mm -hmm. was really, really scary. That attacks oh. that attacks on the three point and makes the anger on the 20, 18 point. What a beautiful yeah, roll okay. from Hideagi. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm... I hate feeling like I have to spend three numbers to get there. I'd love to be just bringing ammunition into the zone, but this does a lot. I think you're right. So this is, again, this is my intuition as always to bring the checker into the, for the attack and worry about the back checkers later. Yeah. But look at this. He's yeah. finding the anchor play. Yeah, yeah, good play, Hideaki. I think I, will find I found this play as well quite fast. It's too yeah. big of a liability. Wow, look at this. How unlucky Mochi is. Yeah. And so this is the other side of that double two, right, is that there is this huge market loss potential for sure. Um, even if there's a ton of game for Mochi, it's just yeah. one sequence where he's like a mile past it. Yes, actually Mochi still wins 38% here. <laughs> so he's yeah. not out yet. He, yeah. can, he just have to survive the Blitz. Yep. But the Blitz is real. I mean, uh, more than half of Hideaki's wins here are Gammons. Yeah. And this is the right play with the 6-2. That's a little bit of an overplay, but it's just slightly... An error. It doesn't technically get a checker in the zone is the, my main problem with it. Yeah. So I want to, yeah, I'm looking at, honest, like, I mean, I'm capable of making a mistake of 18 to 16 there, just trying to get things moving and have yeah. more attack. But I don't think I would have tried the 13 to 11. Okay, at least Mochi is ahead in the PR department. Oof, this is a bad whiff. Uh, he covers, but he yeah. really needs to hit the checker on the four and keep the blitz going. Yes, and now is the crucial swing for Mochi. He needs to anchor up. He does! Wow, wow. a big sigh of relief. That's funny. This is a great roll, but he doesn't get the safety as plot. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> How do you play what it, then? He... What about making the four and then exposing yourself to a double shot? But that's also kind of annoying. What else could you play? Did you play 13 to 1? But that's no good. Yeah, I don't know. This is. I'm ruling out options the same way, and so oh, look at this, thirteen to one. It is, is thirteen to one. Okay, it's too big to leave two two shots in the outfield or double shot. You you can lose gammon that way, so oh, that's course, why you, you shouldn't. You actually, Mochi is playing just as much to avoid losing a gammon as he is to win this game because it's a fifty right. percent match winning, uh, fifty percent match equity swing either way. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's a good play, Mochi. Look at, yeah, I mean, this is very fascinating. The fact that he looks at it, it's pretty impressive. He knows that he can't leave another blot out there, pretty much, I think. Well, maybe he doesn't. He's going to look at this. and I'm, Yeah. To be honest, I, I think I would probably find this play, but I get right. the logic from the engine. Yeah. 
Hey, it's hard to pass this up. I mean, it's such it's the point you want to make. You have so much more pressure with contacts. Like it's there's a lot of, too many good like purity features of it to to find the bot play, I think, in a lot of cases. But to be honest, I think that the bot's play dominates the other play that he was looking at. Oh, there's also this one. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. Oh. I think the bot's play dominates this play, like playing 13 to 1. Uh, well, but... he, gets, he must prevent some hits and like some structure. Oh, what a shot. Yeah. What a shot. Well, play the first one for us. Come on. Actually, the, the extreme gamma uh, lock, it didn't. It removed the green color from the move, which means on XG+, plus, it is within or inside of the error margin. Yeah. So it's less than 20 milli points of a mistake. So it's strong. You can see the merit to it. If playing to the ace is good, then this has got to be okay, I think. <laughs> you know, yeah. So, yeah. And there's a little bit of an outside crime going on here after this play. Right. You could cause him problems on his 18. He doesn't have a lot of timing to deal with this spot. And, yeah, I mean, these double fours, they're really not easy to move. Yeah, I have no idea what the best play is. I'm just, I'm hitting and then play three more or whatever. They're all pretty close, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's actually true. He's not going to make a blunder here. Yeah. But he's, yeah, I mean, he's thinking about how do I, after the hit, how do I get my checkers home mm -hmm. more easy? Why Why would you play that? Oh, that does, makes absolutely no sense. You're going to hit? Of yeah. course. It's I mean, why, why would you hit? Why hasn't he already just moved that the first four? Yeah. Because there isn't a good fourth one with it. I can see it. But I guess, actually... Oh, you know what? The merit of that? Mochi broke his six point. That's actually a really interesting play. I, I kind of like it. Ah, I, so, like you so might want to be hit on the ace, right? Hit, yeah, I think yeah. it's a little bit too out there. But I, I mean, that's true. It's actually cool that yeah. he, he was thinking about it. It's a good idea. You got to yeah. think about how to exploit that weakness in his board the most yeah. you can. And maybe and... it's just for the viewers. <laughs> <laughs> that could be. That could be. Oh, this is tricky. Do you want two points in the outfield and safety the blot? Or do you do something... You know, you could stack them all in 13. I like the look of that, too. Yeah. And then they're actually totally even in equity. Yeah. But, yeah. of course, Hideaki doesn't have that information, and he's going to spend some time here because this is not a trivial play. That's the yeah. pay now decision. You clear the 14 point, but you leave a shot. And it is the time to pay now, I guess, with the open six still, yes. right? So he's going to have a couple, four, three, and four, two are a bummer, but it's, it's only going to get worse in It's general. a pretty good play. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That makes the four point. Uh, makes or the six, the six point, point and slots the four, I yeah, think. Yeah. yeah. You're right. It's better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's also my brain saw this move first, but I think you're right, Nick. The, the six point yeah. is better. I just saw the cover first, and I'm like, oh, cool. We can slot with it. So great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny how our pattern recognition identifies patterns. Oh, for sure. But this is a salvageable game for Mochi now. He, uh, yes. I don't know how he got away with it after some really big swings from Hideaki, but he's looking okay. Here's a, here's now, a match score checker play as well, because Mochi is a little bit scared to jump out with the back checker, which he's yeah. usually just going to do in a heartbeat. Right. And it, it is like the right play. It yeah. is the right play, but he's a little bit scared of doing so. Yeah. But he's got the blot on the ace right now too, right? So there's there's just reasons to try it now. Yeah. I think I would have probably played the ace with 9 to 8 just to keep the connection between my back checkers. But uh, Oh, interesting. That would be That's more shots back. as well. So maybe, I mean, Mochi apparently found the best play yeah. according to XG. Yeah, you play safe. You don't want to be hit here. Mochi's yeah. got a good amount of contact value here from the 21-point anger. He's actually, uh, this is a more of a decision than I was thinking. I was thinking nine to six looks really intuitive just to bring a checker in. You know, you're closer to bearing off. But that, uh, like, slots the back of a prime for the contact. So I, I can see the logic of the seven. Yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. And I think Mochi should know that it's not really a crucial decision. And don't mm -hmm. spend any time bank on it. Five, three, it's playable. Now he's thinking about just breaking contact now, I guess. Yes. There's oh, a bold yeah. play. But, um... It seems too big. I don't think you yeah. volunteer when you don't have to in these games. In yeah, general. that's the thing. He has a playable yeah. alternative. If he, yeah. if the alternative uh, was more ugly, 
then yeah. he would go for the pay now, but yeah. exactly has a playable alternative. And now he can he still has a couple of rolls where he can clear the eight point. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of rolls to get board, lucky with a double. The current board weakness on Mochi's side was a bit of an illusion. You know, he's still giving you a lot of trouble if he can hit there. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is is this what you have to do? Wow, I would have trouble not finding thirteen to eight here, but that makes sense. Yeah, but look at the inner board of Mochi. You can't yeah. give you can't yeah. give shots when it looks like this. Yeah. Is that a good roll or bad roll? This is a great roll. I mean if he wants he can just run off his anchor at this point. But he's down four um, pips. Right. But I'm saying like he can play the single blot anchor because of all the dead checkers. Ah, that he yes, yes, exactly. That's uh, that's not an easy roll by any means. So he can either play the the dragon with the tail. That's yeah. the the name that uh, I asked Michi to give this kind of position where you keep the anchor in the outfield, and then play with a one checker, not a, a ah. ghost anchor, behind. So it's a da dragon with the tail. Yeah. So that would be uh, if he takes one checker from the from the twenty one point anchor and moves it all the way and then plays yeah. eight to two. Yeah. Yeah, he's looking at the dragon with the tail. And they're all really close. Yeah. Exactly. So this I is think... the this is the dragon with the tail. But the it's best interesting play. that yeah, just make the six point board is a great option and then move next roll too, so yeah. you still have flexibility. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think if he was just maximizing his winning chances, the dragon with the tail would be better. No, thirteen to, to one is still better. I think it's an exception because he can just do that next roll, basically, right? So he can make his closed board yeah. okay. and still get a ton of contact by sitting back on his anchor, right? And then just try to come off next time. I, th I think it's a cool play from Mochi here, uh, the dragon with the tail. A lot of players would have just made the ace point. Now, this looks like the spot where you have to do the goofy switch thing. Um, <laughs> like, oh, what yeah. else are you going to do? Oh, no, there's a safe play. There's yeah, a safe there play. is a safe play. That's right. I yeah. didn't see it either. I was also thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. The, the Oof, goofy this switch is play. Really, this is getting really hard for Hideaki, though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's looking not at possible. it. There it is. We've got to have a name for this play as well. Yeah. It's not, uh, it's not a tiger play. I don't know. <laughs> We've got to ask Michi to come up with a name. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the opening anymore, so I don't know if that's fair. You might have to ask someone else. Oh, uh, now I think he's ready to keep maximum contact. So like 13 to 7 seems like part of it for sure. And then I think, do you come in or do you stay on the midpoint is the question for me. I think uh, um, now, now we got the answer. And uh, the reason that it's better to just come down is that, first of all, it's very ugly to front load your spare checkers. This is an yes. ugly play, but OK, it's more contact. It's uh, a yeah. half a blunder from Mochi. But I mean, it's a difficult uh, decision. Oh, look at this. What a shot. Yeah, yeah this is great. cover. Oof, Mochi's yeah. under pressure now. Yeah, still very difficult to lose a gammon. So he's yeah. um, surviving in that sense. Yes. Not impossible, but very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. I think we're down to a couple of percentages. Yeah, like he's probably given up on the other checker now. Totally. Yeah. So four shots here, six, three, five, four. For Mochi, he's shaking the cup a little bit harder. Nope. <laughs> four, one, that's another great shot. But he yeah. still has four shots to win. Yeah. Oh, what about oh seven uh, nine to five thir three to two? What is that? That would only leave three shots, double four and six two. Ah. <laughs> I for sure would have thought that just having that that gap fixed is worth more, but yeah. very interesting. Very interesting. They were equally good. Yeah. So now this is a little tricky too, but I think you just find the simple play, bring one in and. Yes. Stay evenish on the outside. Yeah. I guess you create a six-five. That's interesting. With yeah. the with the best exactly. play, this is the move that you could could consider because this one doesn't have any bad rolls next time. But yeah. But it's it's just a little bit too ugly. It's this one's yeah, better. This, this looks strategically right. All the doubles are going to work great. Yeah. But but yeah, the six-five is a real problem. Good play. So from interesting. Mediaki. Yeah. Mochi has the six-one. Nope. Now he's cheering for the six-five. Mm-hmm. Oh, the six-five! Naturally, he gets this chance. <laughs> of course, he does. Yeah, seven to two looks better to me too. It's uh, it it's funny, really, I guess. It doesn't yeah. really matter much, right? <laughs> yeah, can't matter a little bit, but it, I mean, there's a little difference. Okay, I don't it's know why you play the other one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, the... he hits! Wow, it's so tempting to slot. Yeah. Oh, there's the umpire saying, please wait. 
Maybe he played the other one, uh, the weird. Uh, six yeah, five. entered the six five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hard to enter those moves sometimes when they like you have to switch the dice around to go to the right spot. But yeah. um, yeah, it's so now that he that that six four play earlier where he stacked up the three point. That's now he's got the pressure to take a two off of there and might make a mistake doing that. It is it is a mistake here because uh, yeah he 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 doesn't have to slot it. He preferred to ha to wait until he comes in and then hit. Yes, you that's, feel that's like you can of... though, right? I think that's the thing that tricks you into it, is that like you've got an extra checker there. You're not that sad if you get hit, so you feel like maybe I can just get this game over with quicker and efficiently use this you, checker. You're, right. you're sad if you get hit with six one because six one is survivable yes. now. You got the you, you're gonna hit him a lot of the times. Yeah. You're gonna hit back. Yeah, and really you're not happy on this roll if you get hit either, right? Like you yeah. could fan quite a bit of the time. It was actually a really good decision by Mochi not to. Uh, yeah. Not to slot. Look at this one. This is a trap. This is a little trap that the backgammon guards lay out for Mochi, and he fell into the trap. 6 1 is just too deadly, even though it's natural to maximize. Probably 18 12, yeah. Okay, he, he survives, but that was a small trap yeah. that Mochi fell in. I fall in that trap all the time, for sure. <laughs> I'm just gladly slotted. And I've been hit enough with the, the 6 1 now that I kind of remember it, but I still. I still pull the trigger on that play pretty much every time. I'm just going to keep making that mistake. Yeah, it's, it's natural. We, we're used to, <laughs> to taking the small risk, leaving two shots to slot yeah. the six prime. It's usually a good idea. Mm -hmm. But here, and also with the score and stuff, it's, I mean, you could actually lose a gammon if you yeah. were to get hit with 6-1 from the bar. Okay, there's no pair off plays here from Mochi. So Mochi's gonna. What about the PR race? I didn't get to. See, I didn't notice the PR race for the for many rolls now. What is this? Okay, it's looking oh. good for Mochi. Wow, I was thinking it was unrecoverable, but this is pretty close. You yeah. Know? Yeah. This is looking really good for Mochi, and this PR is gonna go down a little bit with this five one as well. It is a decision. I think Mochi's gonna win win two points here, Nick. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm that's. We got a close race again. Yeah, and that's exciting. He's coming back. The champion. So all of a sudden we got a game. 5 4. Yeah, that's an easy win for Mochi. He could just resign here, Hideaki. No more decisions. Mm -hmm. I always feel like it's easier to just roll. Kenny can still get off it. No, no, this is not resignable. It's for not resignable. It's I mean, he has to roll. He could still make it. <laughs> You can't take the resign error, that's for sure. That's the, it's a PR hit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, wow, great match for Mochi, yeah. yeah well, yeah. even, actually, I mean, I guess he made a pretty big mistake in there somewhere. The one checker play. The one, the one checker, it was a 400 blunder. I mean, imagine yeah. if he hadn't made that one. Wow. <laughs> he would have played a 1.5 or something like this. Yeah. Um, in my own study, I told myself for a long time, if I can figure out how to not make the three and four hundred errors, I think I'll be really good. You know, keep it to the one to two. So it's it makes me feel much better to see that like the best in the world still makes a four hundred error once in a while, right? That's true. That they're yeah. human. Let's see the reaction now from Mochi when he knows that he's gonna win two points here. Yeah. Let's yeah. see if we get a little reaction. Hideaki, ah, he's a little bit disappointed. Yeah. Not too happy. Now we're gonna get the official result. Yeah. I don't think he ever shows much. I think he's just thinking about how it went, probably evaluating, you know, what he's going to do next match. But yeah, here we go. Official okay. two-point win for Mochi. Yes. So uh, that's uh, that's a big, big win for Mochi. He's uh, mm -hmm. back. He's not that far behind now. Down 4-6 yeah. after five matches. So we've got seven more to go. Right. So yeah. that's going to be interesting. Yeah, Nick? and I think oh, our sorry. overall... Yeah, I was going to say our, our overall... Uh, PR comparison, the, the gap's starting to close a little bit too, right? That was a, a huge gap to overcome at the start of the day, and it's getting a little more reasonable for, for Mochi to pick that back up. Yeah, I think uh, both players are probably a little bit unhappy now with the PR average uh, after this match. It, it was quite high for both players. Absolutely. But uh, it was also a tricky match. There was a lot of traps in this match. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking Exciting forward stuff to... so far. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm looking forward to now uh, going to the next part. Uh, I'm joined by a secret grandmaster. You gotta stay tuned to see who it is, and uh, awesome. I'm sure that uh, Nick will be back. Be back for tomorrow's uh, match, Nick. What do you say? Yeah, yeah. See y'all for next match for sure. 
Okay, good. <laughs> so for all the viewers, smash the like button, please, and stay tuned because we're going to be back in a short after the short break. The UBC is produced by Backgammon Galaxy. Play among the stars. Hi there. This is the amazing team who made the UBC production that you're watching right now. You can support us by donating any amount using this QR code or the link in the description below. Donate $50 or more to get a personal shout out later in the video by Mark Olson. Donate $1,000 to get a shout out and your own custom avatar on Galaxy. Thank you so much for your support. Another way to support Backgammon Galaxy is to place your sports bets on BetGalaxy.net, the fastest way to build your Bitcoin bankroll while Bitcoin is skyrocketing. BetGalaxy.net is a Bitcoin-only bookmaker created by the Galaxy team and accepts players worldwide. Create an account now and place your sports bets. Yeah, so uh, Mochi is uh, clawing his way back into the match. Uh, the score is now 6-4 for Hideaki. So 6-2 was a huge lead. 6-4 is still a big lead, but there is some... Uh, chance that Mochi is going to make the comeback. So very exciting match today. Again, we saw a performance that wasn't at the peak level. It wasn't what we expect from these guys. Obviously, the average PRs are still reasonable. Um, they're world class, but you know we expect to see extraordinary things here, like we did in the first three matches. So it's a little bit surprising. Um, a couple of shout-outs here. We got uh, two very nice donations. One from Guy Anisimov, fifty dollars. Uh, Thank you very much. And Caro and Pim as well, $50. So we appreciate it. It goes to the volunteer staff of the UBC to make this beautiful event happen. Then we got a little, uh, we got a little replay for you guys here. Um, yeah, the producer just sent me this, so I gotta play this replay for some highlight. Okay, yeah, I guess uh, that was one of the little uh, funny little remixes from the producer. That's, the, yeah, I guess we never uh, fail to surprise you guys. Um, one more shout out, we got Ralph Bird from Melbourne Open. Uh, his uh, great Melbourne Invitational Tournament is going to be an online tournament this year. It's going to be played on Backgammon Galaxy. It's going to start more or less right after the UBC final ends. And uh, so it's going to be satellites and a big main event for $500. So stay tuned, uh, especially on social media and in the Galaxy newsletter. Okay, guys, I can see the chat is going crazy after all this uh, little cl clip here, but that's that's okay. That's good. Um, we're ready to reveal the the secret grandmaster of today, and we've got a special guest here. Uh, we're in for a treat, guys. So please stay tuned. Try to absorb all the information, all the knowledge that you can get from this special individual. And I'm very happy to introduce... Thomas Tenden. Mr. Thomas Tenden, the Grandmaster from Sweden. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay, so uh, first of all, what do you think about today's match, Thomas? Well... It was uh, okay, it was not the perfect match, but uh, I kind of feel that maybe Mochi was, what can I say? He, he was very determined not to end up in the same situation as he did last time. And perhaps that made him rush one of the most important decisions of the match is yes. a guess. I've done the same thing many times. So after I'm just like Mochi, sometimes playing too slowly. And then the next match I, play too fast so uh, yeah yeah I think maybe you're right it was probably like one of these overcorrections we saw from a, a, a recency uh, blunder or mistake and that he's trying to correct so I think you could be right because for me everything else about Mochi today except for that huge huge enormous 400 blunder that he made I th thought he looked really good he looked relaxed he looked determined yeah. he played super accurate uh, but that blunder but I, I guess we're gonna get back to that one um, so let's just get going here Thomas I'm just scrolling right. through the opening sequence here of game one, and then we see an opening mistake. And if there's any expert or authority in the world, 
it would probably be you, Thomas. So why don't you tell us a little bit about this uh, third role position? Yeah, I kind of felt obliged to bring that one up. Um, it was, um, I mean, it may seem like why is Mochi playing such a passive move? Why would you play 10 to 8? That looks strange. But actually, we know that Mochi is a very serious student of the game and the third role, among other things. And there are some positions where you should lift the plot in similar scenarios just to clean up and reduce your block count a bit. Uh, for example, if you open with a 4-1 split, uh, I don't know, are you entering this we, variant, Mark? We, we can, uh, four, you want, yeah, I can, I can do it for the viewers here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yes, so we're talking about the 4-1 split opening roll, right? Yeah, you do a 4-1 split, uh -huh. then the opponent runs with a 6-3. 4-1 split, then, and then run with 6-3, yes. Yeah, and you roll a 3-2. Aha. Uh -huh. Here, the best play is to hit and lift. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not, saying, I'm not saying that Mochi remembers exactly this position, but I'm saying he probably recalls that in some third row positions, you want to clean up in this sort of scenario. I got it. Uh, mm -hmm. I think so. And uh, it is just that it's wrong here because... Uh, there are some differences between those positions. One is that in that position, stepping up is kind of a mixed blessing because you also invite some hits from the opponent on fours and deuces. And also, in this case, if you step up, you just invite hits with uh, yeah some pretty lame fives and some threes that are already hitting on the 20 point. Um, and also 6-4, which hits in the outfield, otherwise yeah, no longer hits anymore. It's so, duplicated, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. It, it is duplicated. Yes. So it, it doesn't really serve you to clean that up. So there are some differences uh, which make it wrong here, uh, but that is my th analysis of why he made that play. Amazing analysis. Thank you very much, Thomas. Guys, if you like that analysis, smash the like button because this was high level shit. Oh, <laughs> high level yeah. stuff. Smash um, it once if you liked it and three times if you didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on here. Do we have any more flags in game one? I think maybe we had a small, some small inaccuracy, but there was also quite a bit of... Uh, Quite a bit of stuff to take from today so we're skipping some of it and we're gonna fast forward to move nine for hideaki uh half a blunder here with four two so what's going on here thomas yeah um i'm not sure i have that much to add to what you said in the broadcast it's uh yeah you create a very ugly stack on the 22 point uh, by making the wrong play uh, on the other hand of course the play that keeps the most points and doesn't leave any shots is always going to be a candidate. So, um, yeah, what can I say? But yeah. but on the other hand, of course, also, uh, Hideaki is already down a lot in the race. He shouldn't play stiff. He should play to remain flexible and try to get something going. But, yeah. I don't know, maybe I could have uh, made the exact same mistake myself because it just feels like after 11 to 7, what do you do with the deuce? You hate both deuces and you yeah. just play one of them. Yes, there are some conflicting concepts here that generally, like uh, Thomas says, if the, the move that maximizes the number of points that you made is, is usually the best move. But flexibility is definitely an important concept and it's really ugly. And we also got some tactical weaknesses because look at... Look at the fives and the threes, for instance. They're blocked. Yeah. You can't move the stack, and all of a sudden, now you have to break the midpoint while you're still trapped with five checkers. It's just not good. Uh, you're down in the race, play flexible. And the, you're not even outboarded, so you, you're not too scared. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, by the way, Thomas, yeah. could you could you just adjust your mic a little bit? It's a little bit too close to your mouth, I think, if possible. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's possible. Is this better? I think so. Yeah, there's just okay. a little bit of noise coming in. Okay, good. Right, okay. Oh. Um, okay, so and then we have one more flag, the cube action in game one. A surprising sure. pass here from Hideaki. So, what's going on here? Yeah, um, good question because, I mean, in this sort of position, I kind of apply an idea where I 
I can't say that I 100% understand the position or what's going on. Then I try to translate it into another position that I can relate to and understand. So one way to do this is to say, um, let's say I roll this, let's say he rolls this, what happens then, basically? Mm -hmm. So here I thought, let's say Mochi rolls a 2-1. I mean, that's got to be a good roll. It makes the five prime, uh, obviously it can hit and step up as well, so, which just shows that there's some duplication, but it makes the five prime. Uh -huh. So that's a good roll. Mm -hmm. If I'm in this situation and I'm on roll now, would I be happy or would I not be happy to have taken? And I have to say, I feel like, yeah, uh, it's maybe I'm not happy, but it's it's not that bad. I mean, I could roll a six and come out. I could hit. Um, and if you add all the rolls that do that, um, there are quite a few rolls. And OK, mm -hmm. it's not a good position, but it's not the worst. So and you're saying even after a good sequence, even after a good roll, you, you still feel like it should still be a take? Yeah, maybe not a take, but I'm not uh, devastated that I took, if you see what I mean. Okay, maybe it's a pass, but it's, uh, it's, I have play, I have play. Yeah. And, and then, uh, uh, like I said, 2-1 is a great roll. I mean, maybe he rolls a 6-5 or a 6-6 or a 5-1, 6-1, something. Mm -hmm. then, then I'm all of a sudden, uh, I would be very unhappy to have passed. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, based on uh, what a good role for him would be and a not so good role would be, if you kind of average those out, it seems like we have to take. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, one thing I also think uh, you should probably mention is that his numbers are so duplicated to hit that he will so rarely hit in the outfield yes. that I feel like that blot is just an asset. Yes. I mean, he, he, when he makes an inner, uh, his four point, yeah. we can just use that blot to hit him. Yes. So. Uh, it's a really, really good point. Basically, all the threes are strongly duplicated except for five three, which is actually also duplicated because that can make the deuce point or it can jump out. So even five three is to even three six three is also duplicated. So all the six, all the threes are duplicated essentially. Uh, so that's yeah. a great point because with four three, three two, and three one. Mochi will make the four point. Right, and it, so uh, I think so at least. But mm -hmm. but but if you if you move Mochi from Mochi spare on the seven to the nine point, for instance, then uh -huh. we all of a sudden have a completely different uh, scenario because now it feels like what can he roll that doesn't do something great? Yeah. Then then he could roll a six to make the nine point. He could roll yeah. a five to make the four point. All the other numbers make the four or hit or step up then then it would be different but now yes. it feels like he can either be in excellent shape or we actually have a, quite a few numbers where we are in okay shape and therefore we have to take yes and uh, we can even see here with uh i'm showing the viewers here this the the variation that you're talking about here thomas with the blood on the nine point it's just a small pass it's not even a, that of a big big of a pass so it goes to okay, show yeah. that hideaki has a lot of counterplay here his four prime is quite potent gives a lot of prime value to that single checker and if he can just free one of the back checkers he will have some game in the outfield as well outfield control and mobility so yeah it's a lot of equity to to give up uh to drop this position i was surprised to be honest yeah but I can also see that five guys behind a prime is never what you want to see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's move on here. We're into game two now. Another opening game mistake. Now we're in the fourth roll of, of the game. So according to my definition, the first four roll, I categorize that as an opening game. But of course, it's a little bit borderline here. Uh, but again, we're in your territory, Thomas. So why don't you tell us what's going on here with the 2-1? Yeah, I think this one was perhaps harder for me than than the other opening play. But I, I mean, to say what the particular reasons are. But what you can say is to begin with, uh, a two-one in the opening roll, uh, thirteen, eleven, six to five is just the best play. I mean, that's the starting point. Uh, then when the opponent put a guy thirteen to eight, of course that just makes splitting worse. And that just makes uh, the slotting play more dominant. Um, 
then he stepped up uh -huh. to the uh, 22 points. I, I mean, it's not super clear uh, what difference that makes. Um, and we made the four point while at the same time uh, taking a spare off the six points. So there, there are some changes there. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, it, should, it should mean six four can no longer be duplicated by splitting. Um, we uh, we can no longer make many points with the guys on the six. All of them now have to be used for the five point, more or less, mm -hmm. um, since we already have the four and he has the 22. Mm -hmm. So there are many, um, and, and also since we have an interval point, if he hits us or if he runs or something, we have, um, we, it's more dangerous for him, and 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 also the four-point blocks, a two-one hit. There are some, <laughs> there are so many arguments going uh, uh, in each direction. But anyway, uh, when in doubt, 13, 11, 6 to five is the best. And I mean, we should be in doubt. It's not clearly right to do something else. Yeah. If I could add a couple of things here, um, there's the McGrill's safe versus ball play criteria. Uh, Hideaki does have the stronger inner board, a two-point board versus one-point board. That kind of indicates that he can make a ball play. Another thing that uh, often comes up is that when you're playing against an advanced anger, either on the four, usually on the four-point, slotting the, the five-point is actually a, a very efficient play because then your opponent has to break his anger to hit, and usually the, the small numbers, the one, or the ace, or the deuce, or whatever it is to hit, is usually duplicated because three-one is such a good uh, development number on your own side of the board. So slotting against this high anger is usually the right idea for those reasons. And it's a little bit similar here. Uh, Mochi has to break his, his semi-advanced anger here on the on the 22 point to hit. And uh, the deuces are already quite duplicated with the 4-2, which is such a great uh, development number uh, on Mochi's side of the board. So I think that's uh, a couple of key uh, elements that, that switches the, over to the slotting play. Uh, a, a, an argument against the slotting play, I don't remember if you already said this one, Thomas, is that uh, Hideaki already unstacked uh, the six point. He doesn't have five checkers anymore, yeah, so yeah. he has less incentive uh, to use the checkers. But uh, yeah, tricky little play, and the beautiful pure play was the right play, which is always nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move on here. I'm scrolling down game two. It seems like not much happens yet until something big happened. First, we have yeah. uh, a cube action situation for uh, Hideaki. Right, so we're talking about Hideaki's uh, potential cube in uh, move 11, right? Correct, the missed cube from Hideaki. Yes, um, so here, of course, when we see XG's analysis, we can see that uh, it's almost a pass, so of course you should cube. <laughs> but but that's we, we don't know that uh, over the board, uh, but I think it was relatively clear to me here that if if you think uh, how the game will unfold it's it's pretty natural that say we roll something like uh six two we we jump out and lift the blot mm -hmm. um yeah then i mean what's mochi gonna do either he's coming out and leaving direct shots against the five point board or in many cases he's wrecking his board somehow or i mean i it, it is it is clear to me that uh, there's a lot of market loss here, mm -hmm. uh, if I if I uh, put it that way. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, um, I could also of course see the argument that that you think that oh uh, he's still playing a three point game. Uh, I can be relatively close to home with my guys, and it's still close to a take. So maybe I shouldn't cube. Mm -hmm. I mean there are some arguments there as well, but it, it seems clear to me that the market loss is big here. It is, yeah, and that's why why it's such a big mistake not to cube. The volatility is really big, and when Thomas says market losers, he means sequences where he eventually uh, the opponent simply cannot take, and then he the the doubler would sit back and be uh, regret that he didn't cube in time. There's something also here. I think maybe what tricked Hideaki was that he, in his mind, had this position categorized as a kind of a mutual holding game, and usually when your yeah. opponent holds the the three point anger or the twenty two point anger and he's ahead in the race, then it's nowhere near a cube. 
But in my mind, this is actually not a holding, uh, mutual holding game position. This is a crunch game. Because uh, Mochi is lacking timing big time, and he already buried checkers. There's already at least two buried checkers here that's of no use. So in my mind, this is a crunching game, and it's it's a different uh, set of concepts that applies in a con in a crunching game, um, especially like the way more volatile. Uh, you have a waste. All of a sudden, being down in the race is an advantage because now you have the timing advantage rather than the race advantage, and th that's much more important. So. Yeah, I think Hideaki simply uh, got his concept wrong here. Yeah, and, and Mochi's uh, board is kind of a mess, even though it's a four-point board. I mean, it's it's uh, uh, it's not very risky for Hideaki to take control of the outfield. I think it would be very different if uh, Mochi had a guy played two to one in this position, for example. Okay, let's show that one to the viewers here. What do you mean two to one? Oh yeah, if the, if you took one of the checkers from the deuce point and made the five point board. Exactly. Ooh, I think that would gotta... make a huge difference. Oh, yeah, Although huge, huge, huge uh, difference. many of the things we've said are still true. Yeah, he's still lacking timing and all that stuff. But of course his position just improved significantly. And this is actually yeah. a borderline no double. Uh, but it's okay. still a very strong yeah. position for, for Hideaki. Okay, so and then... Uh, what did happen? Oh yes, now is the time. This was the biggest blunder in the UBC championship final so far. And uh, Mochi committed uh, almost a 400 millipoints, 373 millipoints here on a checker play. So what went wrong here, Thomas? Yeah, I mean, I, I can only speculate, but I think that perhaps, uh, like I said early on, one reason could be that he stopped to think for quite a while, actually, here before not doubling. And then perhaps he was telling himself, ah, come on, Mochi, I got to speed up a little bit. And, <laughs> and then he very quickly made this play. I mean, this is just a theory, obviously, but uh, I can do those kind of <laughs> speculations, mi mis mistakes sometimes myself. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I think that I think that uh, one mistake that he makes is that when you make a controversial move like this one, you got to make sure you really mean it to mm. begin with. I mean, uh, he is leaving uh, a lot of shots. Um, I think it's 14 shots uh, and three loose blots against the five point board mm -hmm. um, and making a not a banana split, but kind of that sort of play. Yeah, I, th I think so for one thing, he should have uh, thought carefully about it to begin with. Um, yes, so and, a lesson and, and there, when you're at a dr very dramatic checker play, please make sure that you're taking your time to think it through. <laughs> yeah. And by yeah. the way, uh, what Thomas means with a banana split, that's in the, in the scenario where you are breaking your inner board to make a loose hit. So for instance, if White had to move an, an ace here, he would hit with the ace. Uh, we call this a banana split. Uh, yeah, it's almost a banana split, and uh, he loses 24.4% gammon with this play, uh, rather than very little gammon with the with the safe play here. Um, again, this is a crunch game position, and Mochi is trying to make a blitzing move here when he's outboarded and up in the race. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, and and uh, to to connect a bit to Stick's uh, comments yesterday, I mean, there's there's the thing about what's the DMP play. And I think here you have to see that the play that Mochi is making is very, very clearly the worst play in terms of the gammon difference. I mean, it's certainly going to lose a lot of gammons. It's going to win some gammons, but it's very clearly going to be a negative gammon difference, mm -hmm. whereas the safe play is relatively safe. Mm -hmm. So so that means if, if the aggressive play is going to be right, it has to be clearly the best play at DMP. Mm -hmm. So so I would ask myself, do I think that is clearly the most winning play? Um, and here my answer would be no, because mm -hmm. um, as we will see later, after Mochi's play, it's even a cube. Mm -hmm. I mean, the other player is very clearly a favorite because either he enters and hits, and then he often G's Mochi, so, or he fans and, and more or less loses. So, so, so it's very clear he's an underdog, whereas after the other play, uh, 
what what I did was I visualized if I if I make the 16 pool play six to three, mm-hmm. uh, let's say he rolls a six one, mm-hmm. and makes uh, his 15 point. Uh, wh- I mean, just to to visualize a roll that is seems kind of normal, and in that position I felt who is the favorite? Yeah, I mean. I d- the contact doesn't favor me, but I'm up a bit in the race, so it's it's not very it's not very clear. Yeah. So because of that, I, it, my conclusion okay. is, it is not clearly the most winning play, and I mean, yeah, because of that, I could couldn't make the play. Yes, I think I, I really like your analysis there, Thomas. Um, I I complete with every everything you said. It's such a dramatic play, and it's so obvious that it loses more gammon, so you better be damn sure that it wins you more games, which was not the case here. Uh, but then Hideagi uh, has, a, like again, a dramatic moment because the volatility is sky high here. Uh, and I don't remember, actually, if, if he re- thought about it for, for a, uh, a good amount of time or what he did, but uh, he made a double blunder here. Uh, he should have doubled. It's a huge action cube. So much gammon to be picked up on, but uh, he didn't. So what went wrong? Yeah. Um, so kind of like Nick said during the, the live broadcast uh, or the stream, um, it is almost a sort of a last roll position. It, it really isn't because if he doesn't deliver, there's actually some a cube that can be sent by Mochi, but Mochi already has cube access, so it is kind of similar to a last roll position. And then you have to say, am I very clearly the favorite? And here um, the answer should be yes, because you are not very clearly the favorite to win, although you are, but it should be very clear that you have a, a, a clear advantage in terms of how many gammons you win mm-hmm. when you win. Mm-hmm. But so so for for uh, because of that, uh, he should have been able to find the cube, maybe. But on the other hand, you don't very often cube in backgammon when you have like fifty four percent winning chances. It's it's pretty uncommon. It's an action and, uh, cube. It's because of the volatility. I mean, for yeah, me, yeah. Uh, I and, know that these action cubes are dramatic moments. So a little bit like the three one checker play. This is not. I mean, you gotta stop up and make sure that you're making the right decision because with this much, volati- much volatility, you have a huge p- blunder potential. And this is what happened here. In a holding game position, there's not much volatility. You know, you can make a mistake. It's not the end of the world. But if you make a blunder here, ooh, it's gonna be expensive. And this is what we saw from uh, Hideaki. Um, right, and and, and uh, I, I, I just also wanted to add that the score is a gigantic factor here. I mean, m- m- most people don't think that there's a huge difference in your initial cubes uh, at zero one compared to zero zero, but actually it's, it's, a, it's a marginal cube at zero zero. It's correct by 20 millipoints or something like that, like that. I rolled it out. Okay, so, nice. So, so, so I, I just think you also need to realize that although this is a 200 and something error, wow, it is not that big of a conceptual error in in my opinion. But yeah, it's a score it, thing as well. Yeah, it is. It yeah. is. Um, the score. But, but I think may, maybe Hideaki did undervalue his position after hitting a little bit because. As it happened, um, Mochi entered, and then Hideaki thought uh, for a pretty long while um, before he kept rolling in a position that was actually very clearly too good. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. It's always interesting to speculate uh, uh, what goes wrong, uh, what goes on uh, yeah. inside their know. their brains. Uh, but I think we're doing a good job so far, Thomas. Uh, let's move on to game number three. Uh, let's yep. see, they play perfectly in this game until, okay, small mistake here, uh, a holding game position. Uh, yep. Mochi's got the 21 point anchor and a goalkeeper. Hideaki doubles a little bit too early here. Um, so what do you think about this position? Yeah, um, to begin with, the match score is relevant here because Hideaki is five away, that means uh, Mochi can take a bit deeper, and uh, and the problem is simply it is hard for him to lose his market. 
uh, at zero zero i think this is a fine cube but the problem is uh, say he rolls something like a six one um and mochi replies by a six two i mean that has to be a very very favorable sequence for hideaki and this is still a take uh, at least on plus plus uh -huh. so what did you so do? that five, just five two for for mochi and i'm sorry the sequence was six one for hideaki and five two for mochi that's right? Uh, it was six two for Mochi, but it, I guess okay. that doesn't make too big of a difference. No. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, but um, yeah. Yes, that's still a take. You're right. So that even yeah, that, yeah. So that's the problem. It, there isn't a lot of market loss. Yes. Uh, but it is interesting that it is actually a cube uh, at zero zero. So again, we see the score. Uh, oh, oops, that's the wrong position. Let me just show the viewers here. There we go. And then at zero zero. And here it is according to X. Okay, it's very borderline at least. Yeah, it's so borderline. It's borderline. Yeah. So the match score, even though it's a gamblerless position, so the adjustments are not too big. There is a little bit of adjustment going on. Yeah. And and you the, you said it really quickly that Hideaki was five point away. Why why is that so bad? Or why is that adding as a negative to the cube? Yeah, I mean you you could express it uh, in the way that that. Uh, Mochi does not want to let him become four away. And because of that, he must uh, take a lot of cubes. Mm. Uh, but yeah, in the end, it's just some mathematics in yes. the XG2 match equity table. <laughs> it's because each point in the match score doesn't have an equal weight. Some points are more crucial than others. And being three away is not too efficient, but being four away is very efficient because now your gammons, double gammons wins you the match. Being two away is also nice because now a, a single double, a single game with a double wins you the match. Crawford is even more efficient. So yeah, that three away is, is Mochi doesn't give away too much to let Hideaki win that extra point. So, oh, exactly. Um, okay, so it's a holding game. Uh, yeah, it plays out uh, quite interesting because Mochi hits the turnaround shot immediately with 6-1. And all of a sudden we have an open game again and a little battle going on. And then there's a 4-1. I think maybe you actually initially didn't flag this one, Thomas. I added this flag. But the 4-1 yeah, yeah, yeah. here was an um, interesting decision. Yeah, I mean, I can of course say some things about it. Uh, I mean, obviously making your five points is always going to be a candidate. And uh, when your opponent is on the bar, making an inner board point is extremely important because you force him to dance more often. Um, and the nine point here that we give up uh, works poorly together with the three point. Also, his numbers are duplicated after the play. Uh, I mean, fives and threes uh, do several good things, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, the reason I didn't flag it was because I can't really claim to say that I know to make one play or the other. Yeah, I think yes. I think this was very hard for me, at least. Um, I agree. I think I said over the board uh, live during the commentary that this, this was a tricky play because it's not obvious. It's kind of like these decisions in backgammon. and they come up all the time where you can see that there are two good alternatives. And the only really way of knowing it is by having the experience of knowing how much the assets and liability are worth. And here's just, you can do, make two good plays and it just happens to be that it's a little bit stronger here to make the structure of the five point. I think the, there is some hidden value in the five point here. For instance, you're just one point away from making a six prime. Uh, if yeah, you, yeah. That's some, something like it's not just a three point board you're, you're making here. You're actually one point away from making a six prime. But yeah, it's a very tricky play. I think I could have made the, the hitting play probably 50% of the time here as well. Yeah, it was not easy. Okay, we're moving on here. We're skipping a couple of errors because we want to get down to the juicy stuff. And here's a juicy cube. Again, an action cube from Mochi. It's basically, or I think I said over the board, it was almost like a. Uh, a last roll position, but not quite because of the open uh, one point, but almost a last roll position. Uh, so what do you what do you think about this position, Thomas? Uh, yeah, it's the one that wasn't sent, right? In, Correct. In, in, in move 16. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you you kind of mentioned it uh, in in the stream as well. I think that uh, this is not a cube for money uh, or at zero zero. It's not even uh, close. I mean, mm -hmm. a recube at least is not even close. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, and then you feel like when you're mochi, you're only down by one point. Should I now start to double things that are uh, huge blunders to doubles for uh, at zero zero? It mm -hmm. becomes hard to know that you should do it. And at least for me, I would have to do some mathematics, etc., to to uh, to guide my decision on this one. And uh, yeah, if I didn't have a lot of time, I would probably have to just assume something. And I would, in this case, assume that it is a no double, uh, just like Emochi in the end did. Um, yeah. And yeah, it, I, if I recall correctly, it was actually correct according to some level of analysis. But now that uh, it has been plus plus, it was wrong. Oh so, yeah. yes, you're right. I think you're right. I think maybe I agreed with the four ply that it was a no double. I think my <laughs> okay. analysis yeah. was. Yeah. I think my analysis was that because of the open ace point, it was just not volatile enough. Uh, but now, again, according to the higher yeah. settings, it is. Uh, a uh, redouble. So okay, okay, tough one, tough one for Mochi. Yeah, um, but of course, I mean, I don't know if we should elaborate a little bit on on why it is very different from zero zero. I mean, of course, uh, it becomes different uh, when there's recube, etc., that comes into play. Yes, but, I, uh, I like what Dirk Schiemann said on was it match two? I believe he was the special guest uh, grandmaster. He says that on redoubles there are no such thing as a normal score. Like even one zero to fifteen, is adjusts the doubling window significantly, and maybe this is what we see here: zero zero. It's a double blunder to to, to double. Now he's down six away, five away, and it's actually a redouble. So yeah, tough stuff. Um, let's yeah. move on here yeah. to a tricky little checker play. I believe I called this a trap that Mochi fell into here. Mm -hmm. Or no, no, actually it was the next game. So so what what okay. went wrong here? What went wrong here, Thomas? Yeah, I, I, uh, the reason I flagged this one was just because uh, I felt like it went to show how how difficult it can be to play the checkers when you're too good. Because uh, what Mo Mochi played was just normal. I mean, it's what you, sh <laughs> you just normally play. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to risk... Uh, uh, for example, this six one, and I don't know if it's it matters with the other aces. I don't think so. I think you just don't want to risk the six one and lose your double or cash. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, again, to me, this is uh, very very difficult to get all these kind of decisions right. Yeah. Um, um, let's. It let's... is. It's like where where XG is more of a genius than most of us humans Let's like almost if, all positions but still yeah and uh if, if, if we give the cube to hideaki mochi's play does become correct which means that in a cubeless equity sense mochi makes the better play it wins yeah, more games yeah, yeah. It wins more gammons uh but as as uh, thomas pointed out it's slightly more volatile because of the one six and you don't want to have any volat you want to have as little volatility as possible to have the possibility of simply just casting next turn um yeah Let's let's move on. Yeah, um, and that's it for game three. Okay, the second to last game, game four. Okay, that was a perfect game from both players. Uh, I think actually I really like the five-two uh, roll four of the match here from Hideaki. He found a really nice uh, hitting play on the ace point on XG plus plus. Actually, we see now it is ju just just second best, and the pure play would have been slightly better. But uh, I remember giving him props over the board. And uh, yeah. yeah, we get into a double pass situation. Uh, okay, the final game, game five, uh, it starts out very well for both players. Um, I'm scrolling down the game here and something eventful is about to happen. Okay, move six for Mochi, uh, three, two from the bar. So what do you yeah. think about this position, Thomas? Yeah, um, well, what I'm going to say now, obviously Mochi already knows this, even though he made the wrong play. But, but anyway, uh, what you're looking for uh, in general is you want to be using the cube and you don't want your opponent to use the cube. And the way to do that at this score 
is to make the position contain as few gammons as possible. Mm -hmm. Because it's the um, four-way, two-way score. It, this is the most dramatic score of all of backgammon, uh, where the trailer's gam double gammons wins him the match. So he can be s extremely aggressive. He can basically double a coin flip position as long as there's a little bit of gammon in it. So that's why uh, Thomas uh, uh, says the things he does here. Yeah, so, and and the the... The problem for Mochi here is, of course, that hitting on the four point looks uh, looks natural. Um, it again, just kind of like in the last game, it feels like normal backgammon. Um, but but the problem is now you, I mean, if you make the play of entering on the 22, making the 11 point. Uh, I mean, Hideaki is so far away from ever cubing in this mm -hmm. game. It's True. crazy. Yes. I mean, it's nowhere near it. But but if but if Mochi hits loose, what can happen is Hideaki hits back, and exactly what happened yeah, uh, a little later, we stand in a situation yeah. where Hideaki gets to use the cube, and yeah. get value from that. Yes. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I like your analysis there, Thomas. Just why introduce gammons in the positions when you've got a perfectly fine play, that's nice and solid. Uh, yes, yeah. so here Hideaki gets the cube, and that's just so lovely. And we even see this position. Hideaki is just a 51.5% favorite, but because of the 22% gammon, this is a very clear cube, and it has volatility because it's a blitz style position. Obviously, not the strongest blitz because you've got so many back checkers, uh, but it's volatile, it's blitzy. Hideaki loves to switch, uh, turn the cube here. And there was actually a little bit of blunder potential, I think, for Mochi here, because it's not easy to face these types of decisions at when you're leading two away, four away. Did you see any blunder potential here for, for, for Mochi, Thomas, or what, did you think it was an easy take? I, I, I don't know. It, 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 it felt obvious that Mochi had very, very good winning chances. Uh, so then it becomes a question of how tight he can be at the score and it we know it is very tight so so yeah you you don't know but i i i was pretty convinced that he would take this i have to say um yeah. but also regarding my my last comment i mean i want to make it very clear that of course mochi knows these things and it's not just like <laughs> just because you know that you will always find the right play he yeah. knows that it's a balance of those factors but he just balanced it wrong in this position yes so yeah, yeah. It's not easy. It, it, Pagaman is not easy. That's no. for sure. <laughs> uh, yes, and then we got okay. So then we got a little double four here for Hideaki. Actually, not not a super easy play to find because there's so many different variations here. But he did make a pretty big mistake here. Yeah, um, and the problem with Hideaki's move is, or you could uh, put it differently, the good thing about the best move is that if uh, if Mochi enters with a five or a six, uh, that guy that stayed back for uh, uh, for Hideaki is going to help him get shots. And uh -huh. as a matter of fact, it's, it's even, uh, even going to make it hurt for Mochi if he wants to cover his uh, six points with some rolls. Yes, so, like 4-2, so, yeah. it, it hurts him to cover the six, the six point because now he leaves a direct shot. Yeah. So because of the weakness of Mochi's inner board, he can just play as freely as possible and leave the blood there for contact. It's actually an asset. Exactly. Kind of like uh, Stick mentioned yesterday that whenever your opponent has two, two blots or more in their board, and especially here we can, where he cannot hit Hideaki directly, then you can look to play loose. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and, and the play he did make uh, he doesn't have that asset to generate the contact. Mochi is now free to quickly develop his inner board without leaving any shots. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on. Double six for uh, Mochi. This was a, actually a quite tricky play over the board, even though it's not a big difference in equity between the two plays. Uh, he made the what I now call the dragon with the tail play. Uh, I came up with a play and then I asked Michi to please find a, a suiting name. And I loved your uh, comment, okay. uh, Thomas, in the chat. I saw it. You said, if it, if it involves nature, then it's from Michi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's a good one. Uh, yeah, and then he could also just play 13 to one. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this position, Thomas? Uh, not that much other than the, the 
the same comment that was already made uh, on some previous play that because of the score you want to you want to not be creative you don't want to put the gammon into to play here it is of course very small but mm-hmm. still the mm-hmm. play the two plays that make some sort of sense you make the one that's most conservative yeah kind of which would be to stay in your anger on the 24 point not have a block. i guess um but but i mean the, the, with the crunch usually the conditions for a dragon with a tail play is that the offensive player has crunch yeah. which definite or which uh, clearly uh, uh, decreases the blitz value which means that you can just play a one man holding game without too much loss and thereby remain uh, angered up in the outfield and and gain that anger uh, as well usually actually with a dragon with a tail plays the anger is usually on the 15 or 16 point because then you get even more contact uh, so you're more willing to play the one man back holding game here there's just a little bit of contact in the outfield uh, but that little one pip of contact between the midpoints, it does add up and uh, it, it was a very, very tight play. I like your reasoning, uh, Thomas, uh, for a practical purpose. Again, if you can, why introduce a little bit of volatility and blitz uh, when you don't have to at this score? Um, yeah, close play. Let's move on. Yeah. Let's, let's move but, on but to the truth, truth be told, I prefer Mochi's play as a backgammon play in general. It's nicer play, I think. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> I think I would have played the same. Um, okay, so the 6-4 for Mochi. This one was actually, uh, I mean, usually the, the early, or the what do you call them, the, the volunteer blot plays on the midpoint, where you keep a blot on the midpoint. Usually they're not right, but sometimes they're right. And this <laughs> might be one of those times because of the blot and the crunch and all that stuff. But what do you think about this position, Thomas? Yeah, I think I'll repeat the same comment I've had to the past three or four positions. I mean, it's basically at this score, when there are more reasonable plays, make the conservative one, the one that's not going to get you G'd, period. Mm-hmm. I mean, again, I'm not saying that uh, uh, the way Mochi played is ridiculous or anything, but I'm just saying that's why. I mean, yeah. if you just change the score, the other play is going to be right. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, if you reverse it, for example. Yeah. Um, so. Yes. If you sw- flop, flip the scores. Yeah, because this is a contact play. And the contact-seeking plays, they usually win more gammons. And, but that Mochi wants to do the opposite. I guess in Mochi's mind, as you said, obviously Mochi knows all of this. <laughs> so I guess he, he thought that the compensation of the extra contact uh, would win him sufficiently uh many games to 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 make this a little bit bolder play uh yeah though. yeah and i mean yeah. you could see he has uh, aces duplicated to to cover he is completely stripped and is gonna have to, something's got to give um uh, mochi has a five point board yeah. uh, of course there are so many reasons to to try to seek a bit of contact yes um but yeah and it then the Hideaki was won, wrong. Hideaki rolled one of the best rolls, uh, the pick and pass, or the hit and cover, sorry, uh, which all of a sudden now the outflow blot is a liability. It's not an asset anymore. And that's probably no. why you shouldn't do it to begin with, exactly because of these sequences. Um, okay, and then was that it? Did we have anything else? Oh, yes, we got, uh, this was the trap I mentioned uh, during the broadcast. Um, yeah. The backgammon guards lay out little traps, and Mochi, he stepped right into the trap here. So what happened here, Thomas? Uh, move 23. Yes, move 23, 6-1. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, it's kind of uh, in a way similar to the one we saw the game before, as, as, you, as you said. But I, th- I, think, I think part of it is here that when we get hit on the ace point, if we are then on the seven point, we basically need to enter quite quickly. But if we are not on the seven point, we may be able to dance once more and uh, and survive it. Mm-hmm. And uh, also in general, 18 to 12, it is pretty beautiful. I mean, it looks like it moves the checkers around the way we want. Uh-huh. And, and also we should also, of course, mention that we still have covers uh, from the 6-5 and also from six six four four three three, so good. it's not 
it's not like we don't have any covers but yes yeah very good so it's not a full extra builder that you get from this uh point on the on the seven point and you also duplicate your own six four um so that there's the immediate uh price you pay when he rolls a six one and then there's you get a discount for the other play because actually six five and double six already covers as well as double three and double four and i mean when he rolls the six one you you have better outfield control you can hit back with four numbers five six double five double six um yeah and, and or if you fan one time and then then he rolls the six and now you come in it, it gives you better outfield control so this was actually a sizable error from from mochi uh, visually there was also usually you don't want like this when you have checkers in the outfield to play they should come around naturally and connect it. And there's something unnatural about the disconnection he creates between the two outfield plots, in my opinion. But that's maybe more of a, a, a pattern uh, thing rather than an actual argument. Um, yeah, I, I don't recall exactly how low on time Mochi was, but you could also, perhaps it, you could uh, argue that if you are low on time and you just want to make a play that can't be too bad, Playing 13 to 7 is, I don't, I don't know, it creates a direct cover. How bad can it be? Yeah. So I, I don't know if that was a factor. I, I don't remember how much time he had. And actually, the winning difference is just half a percent. The other play was slightly better, but the big difference comes in gammons. Because it's a little yeah. bit like you already said twice. Like, why make a play that could lose you a free gammon if it goes wrong? <laughs> so, yeah. And, uh, and that was that. Thomas Tenland, thank you so much for coming on the show here. I'm sure that the viewers uh, enjoyed it. And I'm sure that all the viewers are going to smash the like button now to show our appreciation for Thomas. So thank you, Thomas. Thanks for having me. Take yeah. care. Good. Let's just, before we round out, uh, round off the show here, let me just, uh, for, the, for good order's sake, uh, replay the producer, uh, the producer cut here with this little with this little compilation from today's match. Yeah, guys, I hope you like that little uh, that little remix uh, we put out on the end here. Thanks for watching. This was match five. Uh, we are, Mochi is back in contention, 6-4. The score is now. We're back tomorrow at the same time. Uh, a couple of shout outs here. Um, we've got a little free roll tournament tonight on Bagaman Galaxy. Uh, it's called, let me see, what did I call it? I called it something similar to yesterday. Oh, yes, it's called the UBC fanboys free roll uh i'm trying to minimize the can i make it smaller here so you guys can see it yes so that's a free roll so go to backgammon galaxy right now if you want to play it starts in 56 minutes we've got two tournament coins added to the prize pool we already got 22 players signed up what else then we got the earth board of course shout out to the earth board and to fm gammon let me just adjust here there we are in the galaxy shop uh yeah fuad in istanbul and his team did such a great job uh, with this amazing board, luxury board, travel friendly, uh, beautiful materials, a true pleasure to play on with the same design as the Neptune board. Then we got the, the Bed Galaxy. And uh, if you haven't already made an account, you should. You shouldn't cheat yourself for this treat of a bookmaker. It's Bitcoin based. So if you're into Bitcoin, uh, you can yeah, you can place your sports bets and uh, we've got different sports yet. I mean, my favorite sport right now, obviously, always football. Uh, but except outside of football, my favorite sport is uh, MMA and UFC. And we haven't got that on Bet Galaxy yet, but it's coming very soon. You know that there's the Conor McGregor fight tonight, Conor McGregor versus Dustin Poirier. For what it's worth, I'm going with McGregor. I know he's a big favorite, so it's probably not too much value. Do I have other picks? Amanda Hibas, not too many know her. So if you're into MMA, my pick is uh, Amanda Hibas. She's a big upcoming star. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're back tomorrow with match six in the UBC World Championship final. We had a meeting, internal meeting here, and we have decided to call the UBC Championship a World Championship title.
it's not the Monte Carlo official or not even official, but historic world championship. But we did think that this tournament des uh, res deserves to be called a world championship title. And uh, so that's what we're going to call it from now on. Thank you guys for watching. See you tomorrow.